At this point, I'm pretty convinced that aliens live among us, and I'm pretty sure that some of them watch my channel, because every so often I will get a comment about something relating to Linux that makes absolutely no sense, and I'm pretty sure it's going to make no sense to you guys as well. So at two months ago, someone said to me, for systemd based distros, you usually set emp variables in .config slash environment.d slash some name.conf. Now, if you're like me, you probably use your bash rc, your zsh emp, for whatever the equivalent over in fish is. I had no idea what this directory was, I had never considered using it, I didn't even know it existed. But it does have a purpose. Not at all the purpose this person said it had, but it does have a purpose. Now the vast majority of people watching this channel probably use systemd, and before you say, Oh but I don't use systemd, I use run it. I'm aware you exist, but this is a systemd feature. So systemd provides a functionality to allow it to manage various resources and various programs on your system. So those will be things like the .service files, .mount, .device, .socket, and things like that. But the ones you're generally going to interact with are the .service files for actually managing programs. So if you want to start something globally, that would be done with systemctl start and then the name of the service, so let's say open tablet driver for example, and if you wanted to just start it up for the user, that would be systemctl dash dash user and then the name of the service. And generally this is going to do everything you need it to do, but there is a slight problem and that is when it comes to environment variables. Now, when you set an environment variable in something like your shell, let's say you're setting the, the editor variable, for example, this is going to be visible in your shell. But there's one very important thing about this. When you set something in your shell, this is basically the last place along the chain of setup where variables are going to be set. They're actually places way earlier in the chain we can use as well, and that is very important, so keep that in mind. But when you have a systemd unit file, it's not actually going to be working with the exact same environment. So if we want to check the environment visible to our shell, that can be done with either the emp or the print emp command. They're going to do the exact same thing. Uh, if you give emp no arguments, it'll just print everything out. So if we did something like echo, and let's pick something random in this list. Let's say the x in it RC. So if we want to go and print that out, obviously we could go and print it out like that. And if we want to go and set something in here, let's say video underscore test equals Brody, and then rerun the command. Now that's actually in the list. But systemd has a different place to set this. So to check the systemd environment, that is done with systemctl show dash environment, and this is going to show the global environment, the environment that is available to all of the users. But if you just want to check what is available to the current user, like when you're setting a user unit file, just pass in the dash dash user flag, and then you will see that. But as we saw before, this is absolutely nothing compared to this massive list from earlier. And that takes us back to the weird folder we saw earlier. I'm going to be doing this in a VM because it's going to make it much, much easier to actually reload the environment variables. And you'll see why in just a moment. So let's go into the .config directory. Then if you don't already have the folder, make a folder called environment.d. And then inside of here, it's convention to name the files like this. So a number, dash, and then the name. I don't know where this convention came from, but that's just the convention we use. Now, inside of this file, the way that we actually write the environment variables is fairly straightforward. It's basically just key equals value. There are some more complex things we can do, but for most cases, key equals value is all you really need. So let's go and set a, I don't know, let's call it API key. And this can be some string of characters. Now let's go and save this. And this is why we are in a VM. So like most things regarding system D, if you want to reload it, it's much, much easier to just reboot the system. I don't even think there is a way to reload the environment. At least reloading it without having to go and restart every single one of the unit files. So now that I've rebooted, if we go and do echo and then API underscore key, that isn't actually going to work. But 
if we do system CTL dash dash user, make sure user is there because we are setting the local environment variable, then show dash environment. Now the API key that we just set, wherever it is in that list right there, is now set. But because that is a change for the user, it isn't going to be set in the global environment. But there is a place we can go and set that as well. Or more like there is a couple of places, those places being slash Etsy slash environment.d, then the same naming convention we saw before, slash run slash environment.d, and slash user slash lib slash environment.d. Now, those are places that exist specifically just for system D using the environment.d module. But there is also a legacy location that will work outside of system D. So that location is slash Etsy slash environment. And this is the actual place that you set global environment variables. So in this VM, I have moved the API key over to the slash Etsy slash environment file. As we can see in here, it's a different key because I just randomly hit characters, but point still stands. If we go and do an echo, on the API underscore key, it's going to go and output that value. And if we go and do systemctl dash dash user show dash environment, as we can see, the API key is also being loaded in here as well. Now, there is actually another benefit for using the Etsy environment file rather than just the whole system D stuff. So the env program has another functionality and that is modifying the environment. So if we go and run env and let's go and modify the API key variable and let's set this to just be the number one and then launch up Alacrity, for example. So if we go and now print out the API key, as we can see, the value is completely different, but if we go and open up another one, we haven't actually really modified the value. All we've done is actually modified it for that instance of the program. But here's the catch then, and this is why I say it is a benefit of going through this method. Let's say we have the editor variable on my main system. So right now I've got that set to NeoVim. Okay. So if we go and do env editor equals, let's set it to just nano, for example, and then launch up Alacrity once again. So if we go and actually echo out that variable, you would think that it would be set to, uh, it'd be set to nano, but it's not. It's set to envim. And this is where we get to using the bash RC and ZSH env and things like that. So... The env program is going to run as soon as you launch the program. But because something like Alacrity is also going to launch up a shell, that shell is actually going to modify the environment with the shell configuration file. So if you ever see there's some like weird functionality with env, that right there is exactly why. Now, at the top of the Etsy environment file, you may have noticed this line right here. This file is parsed by the PAM env module. So the PAM env module is basically a kernel module for loading up the environment. But the PAM env module actually has a second location it can check as well. So that location is going to be in your home directory and then a file called dot PAM underscore environment. Now, I spelled it wrong, but you get my drift. This file actually has been deprecated, so you can still use it. But at some point in the future, this is going to be removed, so I wouldn't be relying on this functionality actually being there. Also, if you're trying to set the environment variables for both the, uh, the, uh, the systemd files and also for your general shell environment, this isn't going to work. It's only going to work for your shell environment. Now, it should also be noted that the ways I said to set an environment variable for a systemd unit file aren't the only ways to actually do so. Those are just the ways to set it on a total local scale or a total global scale. You can actually set it for the individual unit files as well, but I didn't really think that fit with the rest of what we were talking about today. When I went to look into what in the world that comment was saying, I didn't expect to come out with a video. I thought I was just going to see, okay, this is what that file does and be done with it. But 
then I found five or six different ways to set an environment variable that don't work for every single situation. I didn't think that something seemingly so basic was going to get so insanely complicated. Most of the time, you're going to be fine just using your bash RC, your bash profile, whatever file you want to use, or your ZSHM for whatever fish users. Most of the time, that's going to be fine unless you want to make use of the Emp program, in which case you will have to avoid that, but most of the time you're not going to use that, so it's going to be fine to just keep doing what you're doing. And in this case, System D does not make anything easier. Maybe it's easier from a developer perspective, but at least from a user perspective, no, no, it does not. Anyway, if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.